All right, hello everybody. My name is Peter and I am thrilled to have the opportunity today to present to you another pen review and unboxing and uh, usage because I will not only unbox the pen and give you my opinions about it, but I will try to draw a picture with it to the best of my ability. Got a package here from Gold Spot Pens, uh, which I will admit I have already opened because, well, I wanted to know what was in it. I haven't opened all the contents, however, though. Like this, for example, um, I'm not sure what this is. It says a lot of coffee related things on it. Let me rip it open real quick. That was satisfying. Trash cans in that direction. Looks like in here is some sort of pen, if you believe it or not. I did not know they'd be sending this one. It does, it feels very heavy and uh, does not smell even the slightest bit like coffee, which is a little bit of a letdown, but I do like the texture of it, almost like very um, plastic, plasticized canvas, if you will. That doesn't make any sense. It feels good in my hand. Um, I don't know if I personally would use a pen that looks like a word cloud, but maybe there is someone in your life uh, who you know is a coffee snob and would like this sort of thing. Let's see if it works. Just to see if it does make marks on the paper. Oh, I actually I do like the way this pen writes. It's more of a not a pen, but a pen, coffee pen. It's more of like a gel pen. Actually, I really, I was um, not feeling great about it until I wrote with it, I'll be honest. I still don't really know if I want to be seen in public with it is all. Oh, here's one of the first pen BBSs as a little prelude. Here's one of the first pen BBSs I ever got which is like a weird name, right? Pen BBS? I think it's like Chinese or something. But uh, I was pleasantly surprised with this pen. I think I did a review on it also. Um, I like how it looks. I like throwing it across the desk. I like how it writes. And uh, yeah, like I'd never heard of the brand before, but I like it. And here's another one. And I'll tell you, I did open this box briefly and I opened it and I immediately like snapped, there's like a cardboard hinge right here, which you can tell is kind of broken. And it went and I broke it like the spine of a book, which doesn't matter at all because I'm gonna take this pen out of this box and use it and never use this box again. So it doesn't matter. But let's take this out of here. As you might notice, the special thing about this pen is that it's double-ended like a Push me, pull you if you've ever seen Dr. Doolittle. Or a... Earthworm? For some reason a push me, pull you is the only double-ended thing I can think of. Now let's examine these nibs. This one says Pen BBS since 2005. All right, so... Ancient Chinese Warrior Secrets. F. So maybe this is the fine nib. Yeah, it says China on there. And on the other side, it's kind of got a gold inlay. And it says Pen BBS since 2005. F. So I guess I'm trying to figure out if there's anything, what the difference is between the two nibs. Is one more flexible than the other? Also, it did come with... Um, a ballpoint nib if you want to put that in there, which is an interesting approach because in one pen you carry around in your pocket, you can have a ballpoint nib and a fountain point. Fountain point nib? I'm entering this bag not for the ballpoint nib, but for the eyedropper. So then I guess to fill it up, it has two different reservoirs here. You unscrew this. I guess it I guess I should put two different colored inks in these, shouldn't I? What would be interesting is if the pen was only this long, then it would remind me of those little pencils that I had in 
in grade school when I kept on sharpening them and sharpening them and sharpening them just so that they'd be short as possible. Or maybe only this long. Right with it like this. Actually today I think I'm gonna go with these two colors. This is kind of a rusty red, which I'm not sure I should be shaking, but it seemed like some stuff was settling to the bottom, so I am shaking it. And this black ink here, Noodlers. The one thing I feel bad about is that I only have one dropper for both of them, so if I think it through, which color should I do first? Which color do I not mind there being a little of in the other? I probably don't want black in the red. A little red in the black is maybe a little more okay. On the other hand, I think I do have another dropper somewhere. Look at that, I found it. This one's a little dirty, but it's okay. Open that up. There were some bubbles from me shaking it. It looks very brown actually right now. Maybe I shook it too much or maybe it's actually rusted. Put some of that in there. Actually, it's looking a little bit more purplish or something. It's definitely an odd color. I'm gonna put the silver nib on this one. In the little capsule there, it looks really brown. Maybe I've made a terrible mistake. Put some black ink in the other side with the white dripper. Oh yeah. Oop, I sucked a little bit back out. Wait, I, there's room for a couple more drops. There we go. Put the golden nib on here, or the one with the gold inlay. And there we go. I should have put blue in one of these. It would have matched the pen better. I re kind of regret that now. Let's see if we can get it working. <gasps> it's working. It's working. Look at it go. This is feeling really good. I like it. It feels pretty stiff, I'll tell you that. It feels pretty stiff, but I've kind of come to the point where since I use these for drawing and stuff, at least the style of drawing that I do, I kind of like a stiffer nib, I think. If it flexes too much, it feels more like I'm using a brush pen, and I'm not really into using a brush pen either. So, I kind of like a stiffer nib. Let's try the other. Other side here. This one with the weird rusty brown ink. Oh, <gasps> it's purplish. This side works too. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but I really like the color of this one. This ink. Well, that has nothing to do with the pen really, but this nib feels pretty much identical to this nib. And it's very easy to switch around. Look, I can just be writing like this. La di da di da. Switch around like that. And then la di da di da. De da, de da. I mean, you know, it might take some practice of your finger aerobics, you know. Do do do. Like like spinning a coin between your fingers or something. I'm kind of pa pausing at the apex here so you can see what I'm doing, but I think the more you do it, the faster you get. If you maybe if you're like signing checks or something all day, and you just need to sign every other one in a different color, you'd probably get really fast at it, right? I like it. And you know, practically, you know, most people probably keep the cap on one until they wanted it. It's just it's nice to have the option for both colors. And I don't know why it looks so different on the paper than it does in the little inkwell. I will say I like the way the inkwell is designed, though. That little break in the middle, it looks like a, you know, like an hourglass that isn't quite connected or something. It looks pretty sweet to me. I don't know about this design of the plastic. I mean, 
a lot of the things I have problem with are, you know, it really comes down to personal preference. So you guys are glad. I mean, I'd be glad for you guys to love it, the stuff that I don't. But I feel like the pen works good. I like it. Let's try drawing a picture with it. I like this um, Darth Maul design of it, too. I just want to say that. I'm happy that it lives up to the, uh, the high standard that the one other pen BBS pen I have set for me because it's, it's pretty good for a brand I've never heard of before. Right? I feel like we have lots of pen brands uh, making lots of pens, and a lot of times they're established brands putting out pens that are a disappointment these days. Basically what I'm saying is it's, it's cool to see some up-and-comers, new companies doing some cool things with pens, you know. The market isn't, you know, it's not a shutout market. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I have no idea how to make pens or what the, that might entail, but um, let's try drawing a picture, huh? I do like that this plastic is like a little bit clear though. I, sh I should be used to it that um, there's, after having so many pens and seeing so many, so many of them that, that seem to be, you know, fashioned after, you know, mid seventies countertops, uh, I don't know why I'm still surprised that they seem, this, it just seems so tacky to me. I would just wrap much, but it, it, like I said, personal preference, I would just much rather have like a, a plain flat color. Almost any color would be preferable to something like this personally, but I'm not the only one buying pens out there. In fact, I don't even buy these pens, so I should just shut up, okay? All right, so just in case, and I don't think I did, just in case I did not explicitly state it, this is the Pen BBS 469 Double Nib Fountain Pen in Dusk Mist Blue. Fine point. Both points are fine. Um, now, I have a bit of conflicting information here. On the Gold Spot website, it says one thing. On, if you look it up on Amazon, it says something else. Uh, like, for example, on Amazon, if I found a listing for this pen, the Pen Baby S469 Fountain Pen, says double fine nibs and ballpoint pen nib. Um, on Amazon, it says, like, it says uh, one silver nib and one gold nib. And on Gold Spot, it says two fine point stainless steel nibs. Uh, so I don't... And there's a couple other discrepancies like that between, you know, a, a few different listings I found. For me, I'm a little bit more inclined to believe uh, the, the, the words written on a pen enthusiast website uh, as opposed to what's written on some random listing on Amazon. Because pretty much it seems like anything, anyone can sell things on Amazon these days. It's, it's listed by some company I don't real recognize, you know, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know, it also says on Amazon, filling it up is very easy as it is equipped with gaskets and key positions to avoid leaking ink. You don't even need to use silicone grease. Uh, and then on on the Gold Spot website, it says eyedropper filling only. And it says greasing the section threads with 100% silicone grease is recommended. Um, so I, I did notice, you know, so this pen is a little bit different. It's It's like a couple other pens I have where... It, it's just like a big open area in the pen where you just pour ink into, right? There's no cartridges, there's no pistons or anything. You just pour the ink inside the body of the pen and then screw the top on there. Uh, so there are gaskets. I didn't personally use any silicone grease, but I feel like maybe if the gaskets, you know, if anything went a little bit wrong, it would start leaking or if the gaskets started dry rotting at all, uh, or maybe the silicone grease would help it, help the gaskets, you know, it would extend their lifespan or prevent them from, from dry rotting. I don't know. It'd probably be good. I, I think I probably have a little bit of the grease sitting around somewhere uh, that shipped. I think it came with another pen I got once. So not a bad idea, but the pen doesn't seem to be licking so far. Also, I, I kind of do like the ones where the whole body of the pen fills up with ink because then it, it's a larger inkwell. And that's especially important with this pen because the inkwell is divided up into two, into two separate sections, right? And I think even with it divided up into two separate sections for each end of the pen, uh, you still get a decent, like a really good amount of ink, maybe even more than you would with a normal ink pen with like a cartridge or a piston filler, uh, just because it's like, a, it's like a big tank in there. 
Um, so I don't, I don't really know for sure, 100. percent You know whether these are steel nib or gold or silver. They look steel. They look gold. They look silver. I, I can't tell you for sure. I'm not. I'm just a. I'm just a guy that likes drawing and using pens, and then people send me pens and I show them to you. So I, I don't. I don't want to tell you 100. percent But I will tell you. I like this pen, and this pen. I think I will be using it more specifically for things like taking it around, sketching in coffee shops and stuff like that, taking on camping trips, stuff like that, things where I want to take a pen and draw with it, uh, you know, out of the house, especially situations in which I would have normally taken two pens, you know, where I would have wanted to have two different colors of ink. Boom, it's there in one pen. Now, I did notice, um, it was pointed out to me that I think it probably is is good to keep the lid on the end of the pen that you're not using at the at the time otherwise you know at first you know I was kind of fantasizing about keeping both ends uncapped and then just flipping it around really quick all the time most of the time you don't really end up flipping around that often so just keep the lid on the end you're not using and uh if the pen looks a little more normal that way it doesn't feel as novel but it's but it keeps the other end from drying out and it uh it still feels cool whenever you uncap it. Can you imagine if you saw some if you didn't even know about this kind of pen and then you saw someone uncapping the end of their pen and then just switching it around? You thought they were putting the lid on their pen, but no, they're taking the lid off their pen and then putting it on the other end and there was still another pen on the back of their pen. They think they'd they lose their mind. You don't see a lot of pens like this, I don't think. I mean it's it's cool. It, just the novelty of it's pretty cool. Anyways, like I said, I like I like how it felt. It's a little stiffer than some pens. Some people try to you know advise advise or give me or suggest pens to me based on how like flexible they are. And I really don't think I'm into the flexible pens much anymore. Um, they're fun for like noodling about, making cool swishes and swooshes for me. And I think uh, if you like flexible pens, that's awesome. But Personally, I think I like the more the stiffer ones just because they're more predictable and uh, I know what kind of line width I'm going to get from them, right? So this one uh, is not super flexible and uh, I like that about it. So, yeah, it's not, that's not like a, like a bad thing, I don't think. If, if the side, here, here on the Gold Spot website, it says fitted with two number six size stainless steel fine point nibs, if that matters to you. I usually do go for fine point, the ones that say F on them, or even EF for my drawing purposes, extra fine. Every now and then I do uh, wander into the territory of M for mild or medium, uh, but I don't even know what's above that. B for broad or bold. Uh, but yeah, I like the e, EF and F mostly. Yeah. I say go for it. It's a cool pen. This is uh it's it's, it's like forty three ninety five on Gold Spot, plus like five dollars shipping I think, but then you know, I the one I found on on Amazon was like sixty five dollars with free shipping. But shop around, do your research. Okay, you could find it cheaper in other places. Also, a big part of it probably depends on where you live, different shippings to to different places, and uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. And uh, I'll see if I can answer them, all right? Thanks for watching. This is just a little doodle. Hopefully uh, you can tell the difference between the two inks here. I do kind of regret not choosing another ink besides the black. Um, you, know, but, you know, to go along with the black, that was a more of a sharp contrast. But sometimes subtleness uh, goes a long way. I think it looks all right. I had a fun time with it. All right, I'll see you all later.